Uh, hi, aloha pa again. Uh, time is 11 o'clock today. Ooh, I have to see this good. It's about uh, 8. Right. Good. Couldn't see the date exactly. Uh, I promised that I'm going to be talking about uh, Persian alphabet to you. The reason for it is that um, I remember when I was, uh, just came into the Baha'i faith, it was pretty difficult and I was curious to know uh, how Shovey Effendi speaks in English and what original words were and what did they mean. I was actually surprised when first uh, when I went to India and compared the Persian uh, Book of Certitude of Baha'u'llah with that of the translation of Shovey Effendi and I found out that the book is not only translation but it also interpretations what seemingly seems to be wine uh, uh, means uh, to be uh, cups Shoghi Afendi translated as to be wine uh, so it's just uh, so important to read the book of certitude in English that would be the real intention of Baha'u'llah because the Shoghi Afendi's input is in it so I thought you know maybe some uh, of you uh, Want to know what exactly the words are, or how to, at one point, start to learn a little bit of Persian, because this is the language of Baha'u'llah. So I promise that I'm going to write down <coughs> uh, some essays. I've done about 18 pages here uh, that I put on the website under the media. You have to download that, have that in front of you in order. So. What you write is not exactly how you say it, especially Persian, because there are words that are not in English. So it has to be really pronunciation has to come out. So I wrote my paper here. Whatever the difficulty I have with it, I'll try it. Uh, the first thing is that <clears throat> it's the transliterations that I've used here. <clears throat> if you look at it, it says key to the transliterations. Anytime that I've used word here, especially in the Masnavi of Baha'u'llah, I'm doing the transliterations. Uh, <clears throat> if there's a double A, it will sound as A, as in all. If there's just an A, it would sound as A, as in bad. Same thing with E. If there's double E, then it sounds as E. If there's just one E, then it has to be sound as e, as in bed. Same thing with o. If there is a double o, then it is sound as u, as in tools. <clears throat> but if it is one o, then it would uh, sound simply as o, as in orange. Um, I, the word I that I've used here, uh, it has to come at the beginning of a word. Ironically, <clears throat> when the letter A, al Aleph, we say, Aleph, which means A is in English, and I comes together in the beginning, both of them it could sound as E, like Iran. Iran, when you say E, you don't start just I. You have to start with A and I after it. So, why I have used it uh, as in yes? Whenever I use A, Y, I meant the sound of E as in A, as in play. And O, W would be the sound as OW, as in now. This is important. G, H. I've used G, H to uh, sound as R, R as in French. Like uh, you say, uh, France. This R, that it's very slight, but it... Uh, but in Arabic and Persian, it's more stressed, like a re, te, te, like Quran. So it is te. It's not re, it's te. I know you can say it, but gh means that. And kh, if I used, it's the re. A lot of you can say that, like a, you know, a Scottish word loch, which means lake, or German re, ich, that they use. 
So he, KH means he. Now, the sounds G, not J, G, definitely used to mean G as in egg or gear, whereas J is used to uh, uh, pronounce as J, as in jam. Okay. <clears throat> now, we go to the next pages. Even if I go to, before I go to this page, uh, I'll jump on to the page. Yeah. Uh, to the page, yeah, I could do that, to the page seven. I go to the page seven. Now I'm going to start to talk about the Persian alphabet. I'm going to write it here because if you download it, you have it with you. But the point of matter that I've explained here, I'm going to use these things to say that, to write it down, that Persian alphabet are two kinds, essentially. I say the one type is only a capital form. That means there's no second form to write it, just one way to write it. Uh, in English, every letter you can write it in two different ways. In Persian, there are some letters that is written only one way. There's no two types of it, such as a small and capital. They always come in capital. These words, which I've written here, like, if you look at page 7, uh, is the letter A, D, Zal, which is Z, R, R, and Z, which is again Z, J, for the J, the sound of J, I used Z H in the key to the transliteration. So when you see Z H, it means J as in pleasure. And where? So these are the letters I'm going to write here A, D, Z, Zal, which is Z, R, Z, and I write down the bottom, J, which three dots on it, and Wa. Well. So these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven of all their 32 Persian alphabets, they cannot be attached to the letter in front of them. You have to write them separately. And I've given the example. For example, if I want to write op, which means water, I have to say a, but a cannot be attached to the next letter. So the b has to be written separately. Same as with d. If I write down door, which we say dar to door, so I have to write down d and r separately. Because D cannot attach to R, A cannot be attached to B. Any letter comes in front of these A, D, Z, L, R, Z, J, V cannot be attached to them. But they can be attached to. They themselves cannot attach. For example, in the letter A and B, which is up, if I say Ba, which is B and A here, B can be attached to A. A cannot attach to B. It's a very, very important point. This is why when you look at the letters in the Persian writing, uh, this is the point of separation. Whenever they're separated within a word, words are separated from the other words. But within a word, just one word, sometimes it's separation. The moment there's a separation, that means the letter has to be either A, D, Z, R, Z, J, V. These seven are the one that cannot attach to the oncoming. So that's a very important point. Um, now, these letters, of course, uh, these are the letters, but we do have as well some signs. I'm going to have to use this to clean it up. It's very hard. I tried to clean it. I couldn't clean it with that. this to clean this difficulty it is 
I have, well, because I am not a professional in any shape or form to do this kind of tasks, but if I was badly looking to somebody to teach me uh, Persian, if I was an Englishman, oh, I would appreciate every little bit I could get. So, we do have signs that they go on the top of the um, a letter. Now, there's seven of them, and there's also uh, uh, three in Arabic. I could bring it up, but usually uh, in the writing of Baha'u'llah or Arabic, you could see this. So, if the letter A, this is A, I didn't write it very well. So, if I just write down A, if I put this sign on the top of it, then definitely this means A. Ah. Definitely, it means A. Ah. This represents the Aleph, the A, to mean A. Ah. Okay? Now, let's use a different. Let's use B instead now. So, yeah, now we have a problem with enough writing. This is B. If you have a little sign like this on the top, it means bow. This B with that sign, it means bow. B and O bow. F. It changes to this sign, it means ba. That means automatically a ba. Now, the same sound, if it is on the bottom, the same sign, this means be. It's important. So we saw that sound that I said for the Aleph, it comes only for Aleph. But this tree, A, A, O, comes for every other letters. There is another sign uh, that it's a stress sign in Persian. Now we have serious difficulties because this doesn't want to clean up. Okay. Let's do this. Clean it. Okay, the next thing I want to say about the letters, we can read it anyways. Uh, it's a sign that comes on the top of a letter, um, or is, let me put my pen right here. Now I'm going to actually write a, if we have, again, this was just a B, if I have this sign on the top of it, like two little things like that on the top. In this case, it's very important to see this because it's not in English. I've seen it only uh, uh, Finlanders, they do have that stress. Like my name, the name of Abdul Baha is Abbas. You guys say Abbas or Abbas or Abbas. You just cannot say the B twice. If this sound comes in there, that means that particular letter has to be pronounced two times. So, example. Example, the name of Abdu'l-Baha, see? This is B. So when we see this sign over the top of B, then we say Ab, again we came with the B, we say Boss. Ab bus. So in English, if you write down, you have to say ab bus. See? Ab bus. Ab bus. Twice the B has to be pronounced. That sign is important when it's on the top. Ab bus. Okay. Now, there's two more signs to explain. Here we go again. I'm going to have to use my cleaner to clean this properly. So, let's see. 
You have seen that uh, the letter N, you'll see it in the letter, we have actually a letter N. But there's another way to write down an N. And that's applicable only to Aleph. If a word ends to A-N-N, -N, like Etafaqan, Tasadofan, uh, it's actually a verb, Whatever it comes, it's an Arabic, it's not a Persian, but it has come into Arabic. In this case, they don't use the letter N. They just lose the letter Aleph, which is A, with two dots on the top of it. So, this is Nun, which is N, but that could also be written like this, equal to an Aleph with two signs on the top. If you see this, definitely only at the end of the words. If a word ends to one aleph with two sound at the top, this together means an. Like ettafaqan. Okay. Now, finally, one more thing to say. Now, how do we silence a word? We said how the word could be a, e, o, but also sometimes could be silence. Again, example. This is n. That's na. This is ne, this is no o, okay? But this could have n with a little round things on the top. In that case, there is no sound for n. I use the word uh, babr. I say b, b, and r. Babr. B has a sound, a. Ah. But this B and this R has no sound, so it will be Babr. See, Ba for that. But the other B and the R at the end has no sound, therefore this indicates that, Babr. Okay? So, these were the seven sounds again. I'm going to write down again in A. This sign goes only on the letter Aleph, nowhere else. In that case, that Aleph would be A. If that is on the top, it's A. If this is in the bottom, is A. If it is on the top, is O. If there's nothing like that, would be silence. The silence will never be applied on the letter A. Never. In Arabic, they do silence A with a different way. This board has to be cleaned up again. some more paper. Good. Plus seven sign was the Persian they use it. In Arabic language, there is just to let you know, an A can be silenced if this Aleph has this little sign on it then you cannot, you do not pronounce A. A is out of the picture, if there is that on the top. I'll give an example, like, Kitabul Agdas. Aleph is not sound there, okay? As I said, in Arabic, there is the letter A with the two sign on the top of it, that would mean N. This is used in Persian writings. But in Arabic writings, they do have N made differently in a sense that the last letter, only the last letter, let's say this is Re, if they put something like that on the top, then this does not R and N is attached to it. I've given an example, look, Naseron, see? R has on, not an, on. It could also be an N, like Nase Ren. If these two are on the bottom, last letter, always last letter, on the bottom then it's Nase Ren. If it is O, Nase Ron, 
and if it is an Aleph on the top is An, Nasaran. Okay? Those are Arabic, not necessarily used in Persian language. Persian writing, we don't use that. The word is gone again. I need to speak a couple of other things. We jump to page seven. But I'm going to go back the issues to deal with the actual alphabets. All right. I'm in a chart here, what the sounds are, I'm not even going to write it down. The first uh, letter was A, the second one is B, B, which is B, same as, same as uh, English, P, same as English, is P, T is the same thing. Then the, there is uh, uh, this one, which is Arabic. This one, if it is with three dots on the top, Arab they say fa, fa, almost like English think, I think. They say I think, fa, fa is this. But Persians simply say se. They don't pronounce it any other way, se. Now, uh, it is nice to know that P is only in Persian, not in Arabic. Then the last letter, the other letter is J, which is just as J in English. Ch, ch. We don't have you have C and H to say Ch. In Persian, we do have a Ch with three dollar, three dots under it. Then is Ch de. There's this. There's three different Z. The first Z is actually Arabic. It's not Persian which we write it like this. This is really Arab, Arab they say, the, 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 as in they are, the, same thing. But the second Z, as I've written down here, like Zard, this Z is perfectly like English. Then there's J, which has uh, three dots on the top of it. This fellow is a J, as in ZH. Then we have also a uh, few se. There is this sim. This is Persian. This is Arabic. It's very difficult to say. I don't know even how to say. But it is like fa. They say famat, famat, famat. Fa. It's kind of a fa. Very, you know, comes. Uh, This is Arabic, but Persian they say simply se. There's the second ze, the same thing. If it has this on the top of it, is ze. Arab again they say something like dh, ava, la, 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 but Persian they say simply ze. Okay. Now, this one is something to be explained, is this one. This one is going to be a pronunciation problem, if you haven't heard it. In the chart, this letter, this letter here, which is like this, a small form, and uh, and like every letter in Persian that has two form, this fellow has four form. This comes at the end. If it is written separately, the same thing would be written like this, sort of. If it is attached, and uh, 
In the beginning is like that, and in the middle is written like this. All of them are the same thing. Now this is kind of like a letter A, as in English, but it's not really A. We say A, but it is not A. So, what it is? Let's say I want to say the word Ba'ad. See how I'm saying that? How do I write down Ba'ad? This is Ba'ad. B, the same A in the middle and D at the end. Okay? This is bad. In English we say what? B A um, space here, bad. It's not really bad. Bad. You have to learn the pronunciation. Bad. Like Said. Say. This is the A. Yeah. And D. Said. This is hard to pronounce, pronounce it, but example here. If I say B A with an apostrophe and D, you, you pronounce it as bad. It's really bad. To say this because uh, it's there. The other one that is again hard in English is the letter R. I did brought that up. We have two type of it too. This P, there's two. Uh, I can read uh, these things to know the detail of what's version, what's not. I guess by the There's two other letter. One was this. Same as that, but it has a dot on the top. This is K, K. Or this one. I have used the letter GH to explain that. The. Okay. And there's something to talk about this letter. Letter H, the last one, the last two, is the letter H. How do you pronounce that? We have two H. One is Arabic, one is not Arabic and Persian. You pronounce them both the same way. Arabs have a little different pronunciation of it. Now, letter H. And the beginning of a letter, let's say hell, that's how you write it. He and then L. The same here when it comes in the middle, it changes. This is B, this in the middle is the same thing, but in the middle is written like that. Middle that is attached. When it's attached, it's like that. The same here at the end. When it's the end of the letter, when it's attached, then it changes. Like, uh, it comes like this. You could write it like that, or you could write it like this. The first letter is N. This last, like this, or like this, is actually the same thing, He. When it's attached, it's written like that at the end. But, if it comes at the end, before one of those capitals, then it's written separately, like this. Like, A. Ah. A and H, A. Ah. That means sigh. So I'll explain that to you. to cover.
So I've written a few things here. Uh, Persian, we don't have a vowel as you have it in English. Our vowels are those signs that I said right in the bottom. However, there are three vowels in Persian language. The first is A. The, the second one, which is the last, the last letters really, is V and then is I. These are the three vowels. A is always vowels. This A, if it is like that, is A. If this is A, that is A. This is A. This is O. So when a word starts with A, 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 O, like orange, okay, like end, like Al, you have to start with Aleph and put these signs over the top of it. Okay? And the combination, if you start the letter with E, like Iran, Il, you have to write down letter A plus I. This is a small form of I. This is a capital I, that's a small form. This together is E. V is the same thing. If it has no sound, it's a vowel. But if it has a sound, it acts like a consonant. Like letter W. Letter W in the letter in the word now, W is a vowels. But when we say window, W acts almost like a V, then it's a consonant. So if I attach B in the front of it, it becomes boo, means a smell, B and O, boo. Now this is a consonant. But if I say, I start with the V and put a A on the top, then it's a VA. This is a consonant. If it is this, it's a V. If it is this, it's VO. In that case, it becomes a consonant. Okay, but if it is attached, a letter comes in front of it, it could have no sound, in that case it's a consonant. Same as the letter I. Okay. If I has an A in there, so it's yes, yeah, in yes. This is, if it has A on the top of it, then it's ya. Yeah. Or, yo. With a sound, the vowel turns into a consonant. If it doesn't have a sound, it becomes a vowel. So, got some idea. Let's clean that up too. There's a very, very important thing I just remember, I never talked about it to you, and I've written it here, and that comes to these charts. I've written to page four and three of the charts. And if you look in the, uh, uh, download this, you can see in the front is written with a, I've added a red like this. This is a red, and then let's say I am saying after that B, something like this. This R is not a part of the letter. It only points where this letter can be attached. This is very important. For example, you have the letter L. The L in Persian only can be attached in the middle. Like I'm writing bell, B and L. You can't write this as this or put the, let's say B in the bottom. There's no such things. B has to go in the middle. We have that in English. For example, letter E. 
if you want to attach anything to this, you have to say Y and E. The attachment comes right here and it turns the letter this way. Those red marks in the page 3 and 4 is not a part of the alphabet. It simply tells you that where the attachments are coming. There's also an artistic writing. It's called Nastalik, which myself, I don't know how to write that. Or really, some people with great handwriting can do that. I can partially imitate it to write it down. I've given that too to you. Because sometimes uh, you do see those uh, uh, type of writing you might uh, come across. I've written simply those to teach you or to tell you that how something should be attached to the other one. So I told you the signs in the Persian that uh, something is written on the top with a sign. So you want to write something. Uh, when you write something in Persians, it goes with the uh, syllable. The letter might be very big, but actually when you break it down, it either becomes one letter with a sound or two letter made out of a consonant and a vowel. In a third scenario, both of them are, the two letters, are both consonant, but the second one is silence. So what does that mean now? So I'm going to uh, say a word, let's say, um, um, we'll learn some words. Assembly, when we say assembly in the Baha'i Fi, the word for that is mahfil. So, if I write down what I hear is M, in English I'm writing right now, I written, I hear M with A, so I hear this, ma, letter M with a sound, ma, one syllabus, then I hear fell, we write down in, per, in, uh, in English right now. I see this. Ma fell. Of course, it has to have an H here. Something you don't pronounce very well, but we do. Ma fell. So, as you can see, there is two syllabus in the word ma fell. So, I want to write that down. I know M comes in a capital and a small. Because it comes in two form, I have to start with a small, which is me. This is a small me, M, and this is a capital M. But we have to start with a small M, this M. We don't have the sound of A as a separate letter. We know that it's just A. So that's ma. But it is ma, you see, is an H. So this H comes here. Because there are both of them consonant, automatically the second one has to be has to have no sound. Ma. Okay. Now here F fell. Okay, so that's F. Ma fell. It has a sound and the letter L comes into it. You see? Ma fell. Let's try some other example. There's lots of them. As you can see in these places, I'm actually writing the sound on the top. But that is not the problem when you read the books. There's no signs on any of these letters. You have to know it by heart. So how should you know that? I've explained in the writing here that you've got to go to a transliteration on the Googles, if you go, just say Persian transliteration. I've actually uh, given the website. So in there, you just simply write the word as you see it, and it will tell you. So just go get those uh, stickers, put it on the keyboard, and you can write down any word that you want to write. Let's say I say Canada. Of course, Canada. In Persian, we say Canada. So what am I hearing? What I'm hearing is this, not what you write in English. What I'm hearing in my ear is ka na da. 
I read two A to stress that it is not da, it's da. So to translate this, it's three syllables. Ka, na, da. K is a consonant, it comes with the sound of A or a vowel. So this is K, comes with A. It does not have a sound because the vowel is right behind you. So ka, one consonant and one vowel is one syllabus. Then na, same as that. N with the a. Ka, na. And then da. Same thing. You notice I did not attach A to D because A cannot be attached to D. I told you those sevens. D also cannot be attached to A because D also is capital, cannot be attached, but ka, na, da. One example again. There you go. Thanks to Lisa that had this uh, spray, or I could have not done this tonight. She knew that I have to have something else because these magic pens are not going to write down on this. So again, to write a word, you have to make it into syllabus, different syllables, okay? The word may be very big, but actually it's not a big word. Uh, let's say I'm going to read another word to you. Neshestand. Neshestand means they sat. So, what I hear in English is ne, she, one consonant, one sound, one consonant, one sound. Ne, shes, actually, a second one, which is consonant and consonant and a sound in between. This S sound is silent. There's no sound on it. She has a sound, but S doesn't have a sound. So if there's two consonants, the second one, as I said, that has to be silence. Or one consonant with one. Ne, shes, tand. I brought this up because you could have a syllabus not just made out of two letter or three, sometimes of four, very rarely, like tand, which comes with the English name, for example, Carl. K-A-R-L. It's all one syllabus. Carl. James. There's no two syllabus. It's one. So this is what I hear. So I go to do this in Persian. I, this is N with a ne. Then she. Actually, ne, she has this. After that is S. Ne, shes. Which has supposed to be silence. Ne, shes. And then tand. T with the sound A on the top, N and D are both silence. This is what happens if there are uh, three like this tend, the last two, two has to be silence. The last two has to be silence. I brought this before. So this is one word, ne, shes, tend. When you make syllabus, divide into syllabus, then CC is not difficult. I don't know if there's another point here that I want to say. Well, I wrote that on the top. It's very important that Persian, they write right to left. The book, you look at it this way, we start from the end. Another example of the word Nishastant. So, to conclude, Persians are written from right to left. There are seven signs that goes on the top of the 
uh, letters. And the ordinary books, those things are not showing. Then you have to go to transliteration. I've given the address that you can get there. The letters in the Persian letters are two types. The one type, which is Aleph, Dal, Zal, Re, Ze, Je, and Vav, which is W, they come always in capital. There's no two forms of it. They cannot attach to anything in front of them. But anything else can be attached to them. Therefore, a Persian letter, words, always starts with the a small form, not a capital form, small form, always. If there's an option, the small has to be done. In the sick case of the capitals, because there's no other form, there's only one form. Unlike in English, a Persian letter ends with a capital. You start with capital, we, we end with capital, isn't it? Let's write down uh, the name of the president. Bill. Okay, I hear this. This is how I hear it. Bill. A Persian, I say B. I know this is I. Now, the last letter, which is L, is capital. There is capital L, a small L. But at the end of the word, end of the letter, you have to write capital. Beginning always a small, okay. And uh, essentially, uh, the letter have to be written with the syllable, and I've written those things for you. With this little explanation on what you can download, you can get some idea. The whole notion here was to give you some idea. Why? Because probably in this board, I am going to explain the Masnavi of Baha'u'llah, which I've given the introduction last time. I'm bringing this little thing because I'm going to write down and I'm going to transliterate it as I'm writing those poems here. Or you could download it and have it in front of you. Okay, I don't know how good it was, because uh, since I'm not a professional, this is probably a botched up job, but I can't do anything better than that, people. I'm just by myself. All right. Thank you very much.